Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 13. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, so we're here taking part in the Porsche Sports Car Club. Uh, this one, we actually get a racing car, I believe, out of this, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we're going to be starting off with Magello and then moving over to Silverstone uh, International Circuit, which is actually a different track. Uh, this is a new one, or a new layout that was added to Motorsport 2. Uh, and I actually quite like uh, the international layout. And then we got Laguna Seca. Let's get going. Okay, here we go. We are looking at, I believe it's six laps around Magello. Uh, and we're taking the Porsche Carrera. We've slapped a metric fuck ton of upgrades to this. Uh, and we are eh, about level performance with the car next to us. The only thing is we haven't got aero, but we do have really good tires. So, hopefully the tires are actually going to benefit us during this race. Ooh! Didn't really benefit us there, though. Not too bad so far. Got through the first two corners fairly smoothly. And get through corner number three. Pretty well. Ah! Uh... <laughs> nice slide. Thing is, we're only on the level 15 events at the moment. Once we start getting to uh, level 20, we actually start the endurance series. We start on endurance events at level 20. Which is pretty cool. But it does mean um, we'll have quite a substantial chunk of events to actually complete. Um, like, we'll be going through a variety of events. Ah, oh, I messed that corner up. Lost positions there as well. Obviously not ideal having that happen, but what can you do? Whoa. We're halfway there. Whoa. Donkey in a chair. Not bad. Good pass so far. We are now on to lap number three. And our lap times are looking alright, actually. One minute, two seconds. Bit wide there, so the red Porsche is actually catching up a little bit. Which, again, is never ideal, but... It's not the end of the world. Who did she become? I love that song. Good old Royalston, innit? Not bad.
Oh. So the cars behind are still catching up. But we've got a substantial lead at the moment. So we are looking pretty good. Actually, I'm quite enjoying driving this Porsche, though. Never really been a fan of this Carrera, but uh, this is growing on me. Especially in this game. It's quite a nice drive, actually. Not bad. This is our final lap as well. We've done alright though. I think um, the our performance compared to the Porsche is about an extra 20 performance points. But even though we've got more performance points, it doesn't mean that the car's easier to drive. It's going to definitely be faster. You still have to know how to drive the car. So this one's been a bit of a handful, but I've actually enjoyed driving it. So, looking forward to driving it for the next event, and the event after that. Posting times to scoreboards. Not bad. I will take my money, thank you. And I've got a 10% discount on anti roll bars by eBark, and that's basically for a very large majority of cars. Nice. All right, here we go. So we are now around Silverstone. I'm gonna get going now. I kind of pressed the button a bit too early. And we're off. Not bad. Good start so far. We're gonna take a slightly later entry into that and then pull in closer to the inside. Seems to work pretty well for um, Cops Corner. We've just gone through Maggots and didn't quite make it through Beckett's though. But we're now going through this uh, central section of Silverstone which is only present in Motorsport 2, 3 and 4. And I believe this version of Silverstone just completely got phased out. Yeah, because once the GP circuit came out, they sort of built stuff up in that direction. And that road sort of became obsolete. I think the international circuit then became that side of the track. Rather than this side. But at least now with the new Silverstone, you can actually have two races running at the same time. It's always good when a track can do that because that means more people can enjoy the track at any given time. Not bad. There is so much pollen in the air at the moment. There's like a crap ton of grass pollen just floating around everywhere in my room. 
Luckily, I don't have hay fever, because otherwise I would... Oh, fuck off. More pollen. Luckily, I don't have hay fever, because I'd be dead right now. But I have had, like, points where my nose has been sneezing like crazy. I got right up close and personal, but I never got the position. Because I got too up close and personal. You can tell this is definitely a copy of the last Silverstone. In uh, Motorsport 1. Because a lot of the track is similar. Maybe the boards are different with advertising. Because, you know, licensing and shit. <laughs> See, the reason why I have the driving line, I don't think I've explained why. So, I hate going from car to car. Because going from car to car is very difficult to learn. Because it normally takes a good 10, 15 laps to learn how to drive a car properly. To figure out where your braking points are and get everything perfect. So that you don't make any mistakes on the track. Obviously a more experienced driver might take them less laps. Less experience takes them more. But no matter what, it takes a few laps to find the limit. Always. I think it takes a minimum of three laps. Because every driver will always underdo it, overdo it, and then find the middle ground. That's why it's like a minimum of three laps to perfect a time. You can never do it in any less. And therefore, also explains why I use the driving line. Not the full driving line, because obviously I know how apexes and stuff like that works. That doesn't change based on the car you're driving. It's the same for every single vehicle. What does change, though, is your braking distances. So rather than me trying to work it out constantly going off the track and having to learn constantly, I could just get in, enjoy the game, not have to worry about that. Definitely makes it quite a bit of fun. Working. Hidden from the light. Excuses. It's not excuses, Hans. <laughs> What's up, Hans? How was the uh, cruising earlier? Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. Not bad. Right, let's go to the next one. Woo! -hoo! That's a good way of uh, putting it, hands. I'm someone who drives a shitbox IRL. I love, I love that mentality. Oh! How the hell did that Porsche behind crash into the other one? It's actually roasting in the UK. Like, I feel like I'm in an oven. I'm not going to lie, an oven would probably be more preferable right now. Wow, my least favorite track. Actually, I can't really say this is my least favorite track. I think it was just uh, Motorsport 1 was an absolute bitch to drive around here. Hey, well, that's good to hear, Hans. Good to hear, man.
yeah, sometimes that's going to happen, but um, with this um, new system that we're using to actually um, set up the event, uh, that um, Apollo bot, what that means is basically we can do that and um, not have that problem because we're then basically prioritizing people who stay in the server. And typically, the people who stay and stick around are more likely the ones that follow the cruise rules and enjoy the cruising. Um, so, that way, it sort of makes it more likely uh, that we end up with much better drivers. That's why I've also set that up as well, so people can get themselves in and sort of like in advance say I'm going to be there I want to be there and sort of pre-order without a payment <laughs> they pre-order their position in the session no so what I mean is like just adding abstract triangles onto it so the design that I saw, I really like the pattern where it was just random triangles there. Um, and obviously, you've done that with the black triangles. I think if you add a couple of white triangles around, we'll sort of texture it. It doesn't need to shadow it. Well, I don't think it needs to anyways. Bum 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 Car behind is seven point one seconds behind. They're actually transparent shapes. But if it's black in on the car beneath it, then technically speaking, it is a black color triangle. When you think about it. So, yeah. If it can be changed to, like... Wow, the, the black ones are fine. I think it just needs a couple of white ones on top of it. To add some other color to it. Because the black, the purple, and the white that I saw for that, all of the colors just mix so well. Yeah, as an addition, not changing what's already there. What's already there is good. New, 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 new. It's the last lap in the Porsche Carrera RS. I don't even think it's an RS. Oh well. What? Oh, I was too busy pissing about barking at the dog outside my window. <laughs> oh, so I get so easily distracted by this shit. It's unreal. I do see every Porsche has 3.3 turbo one. They do look fairly similar. I've also just noticed that now that I've crashed my car into the back, the Carrera badge is no longer red. It's now silver. So somehow, since doing that, the car's badge has changed identity. That's impressive. <laughs> and now it's red again. What? What? Oh, all right, whatever. We'll go with it. Nice one. Take another 10 grand. Cheers for that. All right, so we've been awarded the 2006 Porsche number 82 Red Bull 911 GT3.
and 12 grand. Lovely, a Red Bull car. I'm not a great fan of Red Bull racing at the moment, I will admit, but the Red Bull design is a beautiful design. So, uh, we're going to go back and look for the next event, which is the start of the semi pro. And it's actually going to be the 350 horsepower invitational. It says Nissan, but we don't have to take a Nissan, I don't think. No, we don't. So, any car that's below 261 kilowatts, let's get cracking. Oh, actually, we need to find out what the events are. Nissan Speedway, Suzuka Circuit, and then Silverstone. All right, here we go. We're at the Nissan Speedway, and we are in an NSX for this one. This is the Deluxe one. Uh, and this thing is... It's all rear-wheel drive, but it's got uh, 350 brake horsepower. Extremely lightweight. It's about 950 uh, kilograms. And it's also got extremely grippy tires, which will allow us to stick to these corners. Unfortunately... We don't actually have any corners yet. I don't really count these as corners. They're not really any skill to it. You don't break and then go around it. Top speed is a little lacking, I will admit. But, oh well. Who cares? I don't. Ferrari wannabe of the specific age. I like this. That's fair enough, Hans. Yeah, that makes sense. It would be nice seeing it if uh, they could add, like, functionality to weight reduction and actually change, like... The visuals. No, 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 no. Not bad. Slide. Not ideal when it comes to being fast, though. Zim Zima, who got the keys to my motherfucking beamer, bitch? Get the fuck out of the way, bitch. Yeah, that's what I thought. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a horrendous corner, I will admit. What, the NSX? Yeah. I mean, the NSX is basically was designed to be a supercar of the 90s. It was designed to compete with those kind of cars. Because obviously, I, I think it was the 80s or the 90s when the supercar became like what it is today. Because back in the 80s, they were sort of more like sports cars. You sort of had like normal car and then sports car. There wasn't really a category above that. And then they had supercars made. Now they've got hypercars, which is the category above supercars. Hypercars have been around for the past 15 years. Yeah, so around the late 90s. The past 15, 13 years has been hypercars. And now over the past, like, two or three years, we've actually started getting more than that. I think they're called ultra cars now, something like that. I don't know what they're called, though. So don't hold me down on that one. 
But there is a name for them. All right, here we go. So we're actually on the um, Suzuka West circuit, which uh, was actually a... Is that actually pretty cool that they've got Suzuka in this game? Because technically speaking, from Motorsport 2 onwards, um, every single game has my top three favorite racetracks. Those being Suzuka being my favorite, uh, my second place track being Magello, and my third place track being Sakuba. So it's really awesome to see, and especially when you look at games like Gran Turismo, only doesn't really have Magello. So games like Gran Turismo only ever have one or maybe two of my favorite tracks. So it is really nice to see um, more of my tracks that I enjoy in these games. And I think Motorsport 4, in my honest opinion, has the best track list of a majority of video games nowadays. You've got the test track of um, that was introduced in Motorsport 3. That's a pretty enjoyable section of road. Uh, you've got... Uh, um, what else have you got in Motorsport 4? Twin Ring Mategi, that's it. Twin Ring makes an appearance in Most World 4. You've also got um, Sunset Peninsula is obviously in there as well. Which in Most World 4 was the last game that had Sunset Peninsula, I believe. I uh, can't imagine next-gen hypercars. At the moment, recent cars are reaching like 2,000 horses in an insane way. They are. Well, did you see um, that... SRT Tomahawk is what a lot of game developers and a lot of people believe in 2030 what hypercars are going to start to look like. And they're going to have insane amount of cornering ability, handling ability, everything. And I would not be surprised if that became a real thing. 400 mile an hour top speed. Oop. Messed that one up a bit. But yeah, that Tomahawk in Gran Turismo 7 has uh, 2,536 horsepower, I believe. Um, that number just rings a bell. And um, I think it's got like a 1,500 horsepower, like... V4, V6, something like that. That's what the engine sounds like. It sounds like either... A, it sounds like a V6. Which, I mean, when you think about it, Koenigsegg managed to produce a 600 horsepower inline 3 engine for the Jamira concept. Which is going to be a real thing. Which is crazy. I don't think it's needless. I think they need to make power to sell cars now. Especially like hypercars. If they don't have more and more power, no one's going to buy it. But... I think where these manufacturers are going wrong is they're making their cars too expensive. I'm not going to lie. If you saw... The thing is, right, a lot of people buy cars based off of, um, uh, when I say a lot, I mean a good percentage, at least 25%. Well, uh, let's be realistic. Anyone who buys a McLaren will have driven it in a video game. Guaranteed. Anyone who buys any of those supercars will drive them in a video game, will have driven them. And I think these car manufacturers need to put their faster cars in video games for their expensive clients, their expensive customers. But they need to make more family-friendly cars as well that are cheaper. Because that way they would do good. Especially if you're thinking like a company like McLaren, 
For them to make a car probably cost them about 80,000 at the most. Let's be generous. And they sell it for 200,000, something like that, right? That 120,000 of profit does not go into research and development or costs or anything like that. Like the cost of everything will come up to about 100 grand at the most for that car. Let's be realistic. And sure, there's a lot of profit that could then go into, like, the Formula 1 team. But why not have some of that profit go into making regular cars cheaper? Because let's be honest, if they can figure out a way... If McLaren can figure out a way to make a 300 horsepower road car, like a Golf or something like that, and sell it for 20 grand... Yeah, sure, they'll only make two grand profit off that car because it'll cost them 18 grand to make. But their profit maker is in their high-range cars. Yeah? It's an idea that more car makers should look into. We're also level one, which is nice. All right, here we go. Final race around Silverstone. I mean, you think a company like the Volkswagen Group... McLaren is its own thing, so McLaren is a slightly different story, but someone like the Volkswagen Group, I understand what why they do it. If they have a brand like Bugatti, Lamborghini, they can basically have... Bugatti is their ultra high-end performance, which is now going to be partnered with uh, Rimac, which is I'm excited for. Bugatti Rimac. Going to be awesome. Um... <laughs> the rock one being happy that I have an engine with 40, 40 kilowatts. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, um. Obviously, they've got Bugatti Rimac, which is a high end thing. The supercar range is with Lamborghini, pretty much. Uh, and then they've got multiple different family car brands aimed for different people. VW's sort of their, you know. Do you know what? I see the next Pagani being hybrid. Because Horatio Pagani... The next Pagani's in development now, I can guarantee it. Because they've obviously done the Hawaira R. Which is basically the Zonda R, but... The Hawaira. And the R version was the last car that they ever made of the Zonda. So you can imagine the Hawaira has come to the end of its life. Which is sad. But good. Because hopefully Horatio Pagani is actually going to come up with something pretty awesome. For this next car. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed. So a lot of the infotainment consoles that are in golfs and stuff like that um, are all copy and paste from other cars. But again, if that's a way that they can make the cars cheaper by using the same stuff throughout a majority of them, like stuff that can be repeated then do it. By all means, you don't have to design a specific design for every single car. You think if Ferrari was to design a different switch for every one of their Ferraris back when they had that little knobbly thing on the steering wheel? I don't know if they still do. But back when they did and they had it on pretty much every single Ferrari for like 10 years... If they design that as a different knobbly switch every single time, you probably end up looking at a Ferrari costing an extra £500 each. More than likely. Because there's just some things that don't need to be changed in a car for it to still feel new, fresh, and different. You know...
I know my first car is going to be a shitbox, guaranteed. But I think my sometimes new means bad. Yes, agreed. Sometimes it can be bad. Uh, how the hell did I lose control like that? The car smashed up. Unbelievable. And the steering's gone. That's the first time I've actually had my steering be damaged in this game. Um, yeah, so my first car is going to be a shitbox. But I, I have set some ground rules as for what my car can be. It's not allowed to be dark green. It's not allowed to be pink or any weird color. Um, it must have a modern day stereo system. So if I cannot plug my phone in to play music, it's not valuable for me. I will not want it. Unless the car is worth like 500 quid and has the capability for me to swap it out for a new one, then maybe I could question it and think about it. And it also can't be rusty as all fucking hell. It's got to be somewhat decent. You can connect your phone to a car from like 2005. Aux cords did exist back then. It doesn't have to be wireless connection. It's just got to be some way of connecting my phone. Uh, Pop, I won't be hopping on Forza 5 after this. Because uh, this is my uh, recording session for my Motorsport 2 series on YouTube. Oh yeah, USB as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think USB only really works well on iPhones. I don't think Android's really implemented it that well. Because guess what? Android had a headphone jack. Apple sort of got rid of it like eight years ago and they just pushed to use the port <laughs> to do it. Because <laughs> Apple are baboons. Meow. Not bad. Alright. What what time do we get? After two spin outs. Six minutes fifteen, not too bad. Uh we're now level twenty two. We've got some Corvettes available in the dealership. Woohoo, I guess. Give me love. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Not bad. And we got a Nissan. Holy shit, that's a road-going version of that race car. Alright. We're already into these kind of cars now. Bloody hell. That, that's quite a mean-looking exhaust, the system of the black. I did like this car, I will admit. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.